Congratulations on the film, Nick. Thanks, thanks. Um, set in 1921, mm. that must be a whole other set of problems, regardless of trying to you know, assemble this horror film with mm. all this atmosphere. Mm. And how difficult was that and how... Well, it's, it, was, it was so part of it that, 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 it, that it gave, it, rather than just being a challenge, it was actually the raison d'etre of the piece in many ways. The, the, that loss, that post-flu, post-war loss that Europe was suffering was all part of that. Um, that need to see ghosts and that very quickly became the, the, the backbone of the, of the film rather than just that this is going to be ghosts and we're going to scare you with them we're just going to keep throwing set pieces at you it was, it's, it's an emotional journey of, yeah. of discovery for people uh, with, with, with the supernatural and the challenges of the period are very tricky uh, just technically I didn't want to rely on anything that we're familiar with with post-war I didn't want puppies I didn't want, want soldiers coming back I wanted to deal with the, with the aftermath the gaps and the mm. howling sort of harrowing grief that is, that is howling in people's ears a noise that they are having to ignore metaphorically um, because they're getting on with life they haven't got Oprah Winfrey yeah. to sort of talk to and, and all that you know and, and so those are the challenges trying to create mm. a cohesive believable world in a period of Britain we're not familiar with in, 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 in that period that didn't fill the sort of Charleston idea of yeah. the 20s you know and that, that and doing that was part of the fun and the challenge is there an element in that though with you know obviously the setting and the clothes and the characters and, and the costumes how people kind of associate that with ghosts and they associate that with the, the supernatural well I think they associate the, the Victorian era is a much easier aesthetic I think when you do when when you if, you if we'd done a big scary house with lightning and things you much you're, you're into it much quick more, yeah. much more quickly and in many ways because we didn't I think the, the certainly people are more willing to believe in the ghostly world in a period film per se. I think it's much more difficult. I think one of the geniuses of Halloween and those sorts of films is is, is bringing the supernatural to to everyday suburbia. Um, but if you're in a period, yes, your job's made easier. But but our, our job was was not as easy as it could have been because of course we had to then tr create spaces that should be luxurious, big houses, big schools, should be fantastic. This is bucolic beautiful summer England, why is it feeling so weird, you know, and then actually make that, to pervert that, rather than using any um, tropes or traditions of, ho of horror that is yeah. a shorthand. I just didn't want to use any shorthand. There's some shorthand used in the film in the delivery of the scares and the delivery of tension, but that's all part of genre traditions. I just didn't want to cheat, and I wanted the audience to feel they'd earn the tension, because I think cumulatively, by the end of it, and it's the same in literature, but cumulatively, it is more. It is more unsettling and more unnerving because you have you have learned you have uncovered the yeah. the supernatural and the weird about the house, rather than us coming up the drive and seeing a scary house. I think then it's sort of done. Yeah. It's done already, and then there's nowhere really to take it for the rest of the ninety minutes you're going to be in the house. It does kind of creep up when you put a house as well. Does feel like another character. Yes, you know, it's, it's not as obvious, but no. you know, it kind of becomes more foreboding as the movie as mm. it moves along. Is mm. you know, how difficult was it finding the house, and how difficult was it finding the set and or the, or the right house? Your location scouting was really tricky. Yeah, and you, we, we set out thinking, well, there's got to be millions of houses in Britain like this. There's got to be millions of houses in Europe like this. Um, and it was very tricky because we didn't want gothic and anything in really the southern bit of England is a golf course now, mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a hotel, so that's very tricky. We ended up with the exteriors being in Lyme Park in Cheshire, which is um, a, a National Trust property. We couldn't go in because it didn't have the right interiors and things. And the interiors are three houses in the borders of Scotland. And part of the designer's job, John Henson's job, was to pull together all those so they did feel like one cohesive space. And in reality, the building that is the exterior doesn't have anything like enough room in it to fit the spaces that we do. But again, that was quite that that TARDIS quality was quite yeah. helpful, really. But we needed spaces not just that were useful to tell the story, but we could then start to misuse as dolls' house rooms and start to frame people so they appear to be dolls in the rooms, uh, or rather they're, they're redolent of that. When, yeah. when, once the dolls' house element of the film, and of course, having seen the film, you'll know what I'm, the sections I'm talking about. Once that came in, then the house could start to feel like the Doll's House itself. And you've got an incredible homegrown British cast here too. Fantastic cast. Yeah. And obviously anchored by Rebecca Hall, who's yeah. wonderful. Now Rebecca's normally known, or more recently, for stuff like The Town Please Give, mm. or Everything Must Go, where she kind of exudes this warmth. Mm. It, just, it just naturally comes mm. off her on screen. Mm. But here she's very much a strong female role mm. in Florence. What made you, what did you see in Rebecca? And, and why Rebecca, did you want to seem like an obvious choice? Well, it's tough to codify really why, what it was about her. I wrote it with her in mind. You just sort of close your eyes and then you sort of see who, who, you know, a face pops in, um, 
I, 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 was, I was aware of her, I'd seen some work of hers, and I knew that this astonishing ability she has, and just, just her talent was, was perfect. Her looks are not intimidating. She's beautiful in the right way. It doesn't irritate women the way she's beautiful, in the way that George Clooney's looks don't irritate Exactly, men. that's sign of a movie star. Um, yeah, it's a sign of a movie star. Um, but there's also an intelligence to her, and, and I wanted this, I wanted, I saw Florence, I'm not, I'm not describing Rebecca now, but I, but I knew she would be able to do the qualities of Florence, I wanted quite equine, for her to be intelligent and strong, but also quite skittish and vulnerable at the same time, mm. and that's something the horses have, and I, and, you know, I knew that Florence is, uh, I knew that Rebecca would be capable of getting that sort of level of complexity, uh, yeah. to, uh, to, to take us on that journey. And what about directing, you know, directing somebody in horror, directing somebody in a thriller? Mm -hmm. Wes Craven said with Scream, one of the directions he gave Neff Campbell, and it always stood out with me, what's looked like, this was obviously seen later on in the movie, where it's looked like you've been, there's a thousand bullets ricocheting off you. Mm. You know, is, do you feel like you need to give elaborate directions like that to get... Not with Rebecca, and no. not, with, not, not generally. I was, I was prepared to, um, but usually, usually somebody that the, the, our cast worked on from the inside. Um, the three actors responded in very different ways. Occasionally I would talk about what, how it reads on screen with Dominic and he is incredibly familiar with, with what registers and what doesn't and we talk about that and that would be the method of directing with, with, with Imelda. I could be incredibly technical in her rendering and, uh, and her, the, the shape and manner and pace of her performance that was, she had created herself but I, would, I, could, I could tinker with those with incredible accuracy because she, she's, she is a finely tuned instrument and met by astonishing actress, but with Rebecca, it was always internal. There always had to be a logic to it. There always had to be something that is genuinely about Florence. Re Rebecca became obsessed with Florence, and she had to, because she had to not. She was the one responsible. If Florence, if, if there was a crack in the logic of Florence, yes. the film would crumble. And Rebecca knew that. And such was the the, the fine hairline cracks that that, that 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 would be enough to destroy us. That actually she had to be the only one that could be really monitoring those and I and I would I would suggest things that would that would um, help her reach places but all the time she was inside herself looking for those hairline cracks and that was that was what was so uh, an amazing collaboration she she um, she keeps she keeps so much in her mind she's so so clever and so on it and loyal and uh, and just wanting to get it better and better and better and better and, and she, she could have gone all day all day it's astonishing performance Nick, thank you very much for your time.